another episode of The Monkey Boy Presents the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, and today I am proud to bring you issue number 11, Superman's arch nemesis, Lex Luthor, and wait till you guys see this figure up close, it is one of the best in the line so far, he is, I think, a must-have in this series if you're a fan of DC Comics at all, um, the villains are just fantastic in this line. Anyway, as usual, first, we shall cover the magazine, giving you everything you need to know about the character, including some really interesting facts about Mr. Luther that you may not know. And then we'll cover the figure itself, taking a look at the good, the bad, the ugly. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again for tuning in. And this is the DC Comics Superhero Collection, issue number 11, Lex Luthor. First up, we have the character section, where we learn a little bit more about who exactly Lex Luthor is. He was born to extremely wealthy parents, and they moved him out to a town called Smallville, where he <clears throat> attended school in his late teens, and befriended sort of an outcast there, a nerdy little kid named Clark Kent, and the two sort of grew to become friends. After the accident left him traumatized and freshly bald, he moved back to Metropolis and had no recollection of pretty much anything that happened to him in Smallville. After he became Metropolis' golden child, uh, Superman showed up and came to town and kind of stole his thunder. He resented this alien from another world coming and stealing what was rightfully his. He was a man of Earth, not some alien freak who was here. So uh, the resentment began as soon as Superman came to town. We next find out about how Lex decided to clone himself using some of his own DNA and Superman's to create what would become the new Superman. Superman did, though, he could never prove that Lex was behind any of the attempts made against him or the citizens of Metropolis, and having conquered Metropolis, he set his sights on Gotham City. We learn about how he and Bruce Wayne actually are business associates, having done deals in the past, but how neither one of them really trusts the other, and we also learn about the No Man's Land event. After the events of No Man's Land, Lex became sort of a hero, at least in the eyes of the American public, and used this popularity to begin his political career, and actually managed to become President of the United States with his long-lost friend from Smallville High, Pete Ross, as his Vice President. Lex went on the offensive and actually used members of the Justice League, the military, and even uh, manipulated the public into believing that Batman and Superman were traitors to the country and were actually trying to help take over the world. In the end, of course, Batman and Superman prevailed, taking out Lex Luthor even in his new power suit and he was presumed dead. They couldn't find him after the battle. Uh, there was an explosion. A short time later, Lex Luthor all of a sudden appears again, only it's not the Lex Luthor we all think it is. It's actually a doppelganger of his from an alternate Earth, a man named Alexander Luthor. Around this time, the real Lex comes back as well and kind of challenges this other Luthor. In the end, our Lex realizes that Alexander is completely insane and doesn't want to risk destroying the world just to potentially rule over a few more. And in the end, he actually gets the Joker to do his dirty work for him. 
So after the events of this crisis, he uses the body of this dead doppelganger of his to convince the public that it was this evil twin all along. And so Aurelex was exonerated of all charges and went on to tr form a superhero corporation known as Infinity Inc. After the debacle of Infinity Inc., Lex went underground and became a full-blown supervillain, privately funding the Injustice League, and still has his sights set on exposing Superman for the evil alien being he truly is. Mr. Luthor gets three classic storylines to choose from. First up, we have 2004's Superman Birthright. Superman Birthright is technically a retelling of Superman's origin stories. It also retells and updates Lex Luthor's origin story, something that hasn't been done since the 1950s. Next is Lex Luthor, Man of Steel. Basically what this story is, is you get to see the world through Lex Luthor's eyes. You get to see how he sees Superman as this sort of weird looking alien guy with these glowing red eyes. You get to uh, see what drives Lex and, and, and the people around him. It's actually a very insightful movie. Finally we have The Infinite Crisis. story is definitely not a Lex Luthor story per se. He is a pivotal character in it, actually using his resources to help the Justice League uh, to protect and save our Earth as well as restore the multiverse, and we get to see that he will protect his Earth at all costs, even if it means killing an alternate universe version of himself. Lex's allies and enemies section features, of course, the Man of Steel, Lois Lane, and a nice little group shot of the Injustice League founding members. And the next couple pages are exclusively his enemies. Lex's iconography section features the many different versions of Lex, basically the multiverse Lex Luthers. Uh, we get to see the Earth 2 Lex Luthor, who is the evil mad scientist Lex that a lot of people are familiar with as well as the more modern version of brilliant young scientist turned billionaire industrialist Lex Luthor from Our Earth, Earth One. And in the original thinking section, we are continuing with the DC timeline, and in part two we learn a little bit about magic and demons. We learn a little bit about the Guardians of the Universe and their first attempt at trying to police the galaxy using the Manhunters. Also learn about the many various different elemental and magical beings that are in the galaxy. Here he is, Lex Luthor, and this figure is awesome. Just absolutely awesome. Uh, Ra's al Ghul was awesome, this one is no different. Have you ever noticed how the villains are usually the more fun characters? Because <laughs> Lex definitely is one of the more fun ones. Uh, you know, he could have been really boring, they could have just put him in some sort of simple business suit, but they didn't. They put him in one of his power suits, and I love the take on it. It's not really, you know, any one suit in particular. It's sort of an amalgamation of all of them, which I really love. And just the detailing on this thing is so intricate. All the little green blotches here on his fists, that's not paint running or anything. Those are mistakes. Those are, hit, that's like chinks of his armor in the knuckles showing through there. It's, it's you know, got this sort of, you know, braided look just like the rest of his armor does. And it's in the knuckles, it's in the wrists. It's just awesome. And the bulk of this figure is great too. You know, he looks huge and Lex isn't really huge. It's, it's the suit again. I mean, all the way down to his boots. The boots even have little, it's almost like cog work 
he almost looks like a Gears of War soldier. <laughs> you know, he's got that big bulk. I've got Gears of War on my brain because I've been playing with my brother on Xbox. It's, it's great. Uh, this figure is just stunning. Uh, and the power cell on his chest and everything. And even the head sculpt. I mean, you know, Lex Luthor, you, you think, well, how's it, how can you screw up Lex Luthor? Well, you know, you can. It's probably a lot easier than one would think. But they really didn't, you know, and he's just got that attitude, that sort of snarky look on his face. It's really, really nice. Uh, more pictures here in just a second. Lex is staying at the top of the DC logo base, and on the underside is his name and serial number. And just so you can get a comparison shot, we have him next to the Man of Steel. see just how big he is in that armor, we have him with Darkseid. Lex is outstanding, honestly an outstanding figure. If there are any must-haves in this line, he is definitely one of the must-haves. The details on this thing are stunning, really. I mean, every minute little detail is there. The knuckles, uh, the little panels on his on his gauntlets, the boots, the cog work things around the feet are really incredible. Something also that they did with this figure successfully that wasn't so successful with the Green Lantern is there's a metallic fleck in certain parts of the paint. Uh, most notably, the purple on the boots and gloves and the lighter green on the vest have metallic fleck in it and it works on this one it works really really well um also really nice detail around the head and the neck i love how there's like a black detail around the edge of that mandarin collar on his neck it's so so great um the good everything about this figure the paint scheme the details the sculpt work the pose i love that they put him in this suit instead of some sort of boring business suit or something like on the anime series and I like that they didn't try to do any one suit in particular it's a nice blending of all of them the bad there are a couple little spots here and there that are like nicked or bleeding but it's nothing major when you look at this thing overall the most important parts are perfect and that's all that really matters little imperfections just tell you that it's hand done the ugly nothing ugly about this figure I have heard no complaints about this figure from anyone else I've seen a couple that have little smudges here and there I've seen one with a little scratch across that gold power source thing on his chest but otherwise I fantastic really uh, a great figure another another fun one i'm so happy to have brought it to you guys thank you all so much for tuning in really looking forward to the next one we have a short teaser for that at the end of this so please stay tuned as always i am your humble host the monkey boy hope to see you for the next one thank you so much for watching <laughs>